what's going on guys welcome to another video i am nary chase and in this video i'm going to go ahead and finally do my spoiler review for batman vs superman dawn of justice and i know this review has been late and late as hell but i'm going to go ahead and do it because i really wanted to do it and talk about the things that i saw in it now in this spoiler reviews which the new spoiler reviews i'm going to be doing i'm not going to be talking about the whole movie i'm probably going to talk about eight scenes that actually stood out to me that i actually want to talk about so here we go. Now, the first sequence of uh, the Batman v Superman film, besides you see Bruce's parents get killed, is the fact that you see Bruce Wayne going through the city as he's being destroyed. And I think that was a really well shot and like, like badass like choreographed sequence because you see Bruce Wayne is in this car driving between these buildings and you can see the aftermath of the, what was it, that terraforming machine of the ship and it's destroying the city. There's a sequence where the jet from the Man of Steel, that one, you know, one of those jets that was trying to destroy that ship, end up crashing, and it actually shows the ship crash near where Bruce Wayne was driving. Like that was pretty cool. He was weaving in between the buildings. Some of the buildings were just collapsing down upon it and stuff. And it just shows how bad ass of a character he is. And it's pretty cool because it does show like why Superman is out of fighting, what the human aspect of it is going on. And I like that. Especially the sequence where you actually see the building that Zod and Superman are in and when Zod activates his heat beams for the first time. And you see how that building collapse and I love that sequence and I also like the fact that it had that personal emotional sequence behind it which is what drives Batman to want to take on Superman that whole sequence is just action-packed it was tight it was well shot I love the pacing of it it was just uh, uh, uh. and then there's another sequence where Lois Lane is like in the desert and she's meeting with these, I don't know what they were, guerrillas, terrorists, she's meeting with them. And then all of the terrorists end up getting killed. And Superman comes there and saves Lois, but it's all a pretty big setup for Superman. And I think, and the fact that you find out that Lex Luthor is responsible for it isn't really far-fetched, but it's pretty cool. But it also got me kind of question is like how do these people think superman did it when they all were shot like all the terrorist guys were shot so i'm like how in the hell do they think that superman did it did they do like a maybe did the place get torched or something after that uh did they go back and i don't know blow the bodies up or something and made it seem like it now that one terrorist leader that superman actually killed i can understand but all the rest of the people got shot by those mercenary guys so it's like how do you mistake that <laughs> How do you mistake that? I, I still don't understand that sequence. And I think that sequence is pretty cool too because it kind of shows where Superman and Lois Lane's relationship is. You know that relationship that we saw back in the day in the Superman animated series where Superman always showed up to save Lois Lane. And in this movie, Superman shows up to save Lois Lane. And it was pretty cool how he did it. I mean, this terrorist guy's got a gun up to Lois's head. He's threatening the shooter. Superman just super speeds this guy like threw over like five or six walls of course i'm probably exaggerating but he with some like brick walls he like went with that guy through the wall so it's like there's no way that guy was coming back so i was like damn that was tight and then you got bruce wayne and you got princess diana and which we all knew that wonder woman was going to be in this film but it's pretty cool seeing how these two characters kind of met because it was like an espionage thing Bruce Wayne is going after Lex because Lex has something that he knows can kill Superman. And then Diana is going after Lex because Diana knows that Lex has something that belongs to her that will reveal her secret identity. So I like how that corporate espionage and spy sequence, whatever you want to call it, kind of brought these two characters together. And I do like the dialogue between them where, you know, Bruce Wayne approaches her and she's like, you know, I'm not the one, I'm not like every other woman. And it's like cool, pretty cool because we know that she's a Wonder Woman. So in that sequence, I really like, did like the back and forth banter. And I also like that kind of ally relationship these two have. They aren't friends, but they're really not allies, but they kind of on like the same team almost. So I really like that exchange. And also, as an afterthought to that, I did really like the exchange where Bruce and Clark were actually sitting here talking and having this back and forth banter about Superman, the good that he does, the bad that he represents. You know, I really did appreciate that. And I also like the fact that Lex did show up. So that is one sequence in the film that I thought 
was a bit out of place and I felt could have probably been in like another sequence or portrayed through another character. And this is the part where Bruce Wayne ends up like having his vision of the future. And what you see in the trailer where Superman has Batman strung up and he takes his mask off. So it's that vision. And then it's weird because Batman is having this vision and all these like bad creatures which you expect would be those hell wing things that dark side controls which is like okay the next this is going to lead up to a dark side film and it's pretty cool because you got all these bad things flying around kicking people's ass and all these SWAT team guys are fighting them and then you got Batman actually fighting the SWAT team but it's like weird because it's like why did that happen now I can understand and it's also interesting because it shows a thing where Flash shows up and it's like he's like caught in like the time vortex. Like he ran back to the past and he was trying to warn Bruce Wayne. And I still think that that whole sequence shouldn't really been in the movie. That should have been either with another character. Most likely should have been through either Wonder Woman's character or Superman's character, but not Batman. Of course, there's the next sequence where everybody knows that Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg are going to make an appearance in the film and they did and I like the way that they did it as recordings where Flash was uh, in the store and end up saving this one guy that was getting robbed or like that and it was like a recording of it so I think that was pretty cool and it actually kind of makes you think that what Lex is sitting here surveillance in these people with superpowers like urban legends or something like that anyways he ends up doing it you see flash do his thing it's like okay that was pretty cool then you got these two little submarine things in the water and it's just like a small cave and next you know you see aquaman kind of come out of it with one of his, his trident it's like the one machine is like approaching them and another one is like recording their interactions so you see aquaman like destroy that machine and i'm like okay that was pretty cool that was an interesting way of bringing his character into the film and then you also got this record where cyborg isn't a cyborg yet his father's trying to build him uh, repair his body and you see that something really crazy goes on in the background while his father's trying to record it So that's another sequence that I thought that they did that was pretty cool I was like, okay, they did introduce these three characters and they did it in a pretty cool way So and it makes me kind of wonder will Batman try to go out there and try to find those characters Which will make their own movies that will tie into the Justice League movie And of course we have the Batman versus Superman fight and I have to say it was epic of course Superman just demonstrates that he can just dominate Batman, especially the moment when he just like walks up to him and he just like pushes him and Batman goes flying like 50 feet. So like, okay, that was pretty cool. But I liked how Batman used his knowledge and the kryptonite and the way he used it to weaken back to Superman so that way they could fight. And it was a really brutal fight on both ends. Most of the time when Superman's weakened, Batman is kicking his ass, but then you can see the sequences where Superman is getting his strength back and he starts to dominate Batman again and then Batman ended up shooting him again. And of course, you know, Batman is just it just it's a pretty brutal fight. It was even one sequence where Batman was like swinging Superman through like pillars and stuff. And it's like, okay, that was pretty badass. It was pretty cool. And I know there's a bit of controversy about how that, that climactic battle ended, but I really didn't have a, a, any problem with it because to me, it made sense. Of course, in the background, Lex is manipulating the events and I saw it coming a mile away when I seen the trailer. It was two things in the trailer that made me see this scene. The fact that they showed Zod's body and the fact that they showed Doomsday. And I already knew it. I said, Lex is going to take Zod's body and he's going to create Doomsday. What happened in the movie? Lex takes Zod's body and creates Doomsday. I think that's actually a really cool way of actually doing it because it did make sense for the most part. You took alien technology to reanimate a dead alien and, you know, you kind of tweaked it a little bit and he created a, another alien that was really badass. And I like the way that they did it. It did really make sense. I honestly got to give it to him. Like, I really wish that the, alien, the sequence of him reanimating the course would have been a bit different. And of course, the best sequence of the whole freaking movie besides the Batman and Superman fight is the Doomsday versus the Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman fight. It was completely 
epic. It was completely badass. And not only was it badass, what made it even more epic was the fact of how Wonder Woman showed up. Doomsday goes to attack Lex. Superman fights Doomsday. Superman takes Doomsday into the sky, into space. They get nuked by the uh, government. Superman is knocked out. Doomsday comes back. They're, the government is trying to use the military to take on Doomsday, but it's not working. So Batman takes on Doomsday until Superman can recover. Uh, Doomsday ends up, you know, blasting Batman out of the sky and everything. And then what happens right before uh, Superman, uh, right before Batman can get the full <laughs> attention of Doomsday's heat blast, who drops down and saves him? You think it would be Superman? No, because he hadn't recovered at this time. Well, he probably did, but he was like on his way back. Wonder Woman shows up. That was literally the most badass one of the most badass superhero interests I've ever seen in a superhero film. Cause she just comes down like that and I was like, that's tight, that's tight. And I love the fact that the film let, you get to see all three of these characters just take on this most badass creature. Now I know that the Doomsday, you know, reincarnation, him getting stronger and getting immune to attacks was a bit different, but I liked it because it was more destructive and it actually showed that he was just like he was just a force to be reckoned with and regardless of his him just destroying stuff or him you know coming back to life and all of that he was just epic as a villain and i really liked him he was completely badass he was a bit bigger than i wanted him to be but i didn't mind the fact that he was cgi and with the motion capture and all that i didn't mind his design and how as the fight escalated he kept growing the bone spikes because it made more sense um, but I really liked it. I love, and I have to say, Wonder Woman was completely badass. She had some of the most badass, epic moments during this fight sequence. It was just so tight. It was beautiful. I loved it. It was one sequence where you got Superman flying towards Doomsday, and then he like unleashes like his heat blast, and then Doomsday unleashes his heat blast, and having like a heat blast clash. And I was like, that's tight. And it's kind of messed up because. Batman is like really can't do anything even though he's trying to help in the fight He really can't do anything because it's like three gods and there's one human that's trying to fight but um, I just had to end it right there. I really just wanted to talk about it uh, and Being a spoiler review. I really liked it. Of course this thing is months uh, old and everything but I don't care. I wanted to put that out there I wanted to do this video guys in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about you know, Batman versus Superman. Did you really like it? Did you not like it? Tell me the things that you did like. Tell me the things that you didn't like. Did you like any of my points that I made on this? Specifically, how epic and badass Wonder Woman was. And until the next video, guys, Nerd Chase, signing out.